Hello and welcome back to the channel everybody. Uh, another video for you of uh, work on the MR2 Roadster or Spider as you Americans call it. Um, before we start though I want to show you this new t-shirt. I like it. I like it a lot. Um, it's uh, just a bit of a custom thing. I thought the Mad logo and about my MR2 would be would be pretty cool. Um, I'm hoping to start doing them as a merchandise for people to buy. If you want to support the channel, if you want to help me keep things going a bit further and uh, do more work on the MR2 and creating more content for you, then that'd be great. Uh, the job today though, and uh, going on to uh, what we're actually doing today, is the sump the oil sump at the bottom of the ones Z engine is getting swapped out and we're going to do an oil change while we do that so we're going to drop the old oil take the sump off put the new sump on fill back up with oil and see where we go from there so first things first we're going to get under the car and we're going to drain the old oil okay everybody as you can see the uh, the oil sump is a bit rusty uh, i'd say past a bit rusty actually quite a lot of rusty um so we're going to drain the oil swap that sump out and uh, put a brand new one on and then put new oil in so first of all let's get the sump plug off now, there's apparently a trick to this if you stay above the plug and keep pushing it inwards you can get them out without dripping it all over your arm apparently like that ta-da going to leave that to drain and once it's done we'll come back and we'll take this sump off ok guys as you can see we've, um, we've got the sump plug out all the oil's draining it's just dripping a little bit we're now going to get our 10mm socket and try and undo all the nuts and bolts from under the sump so my first thoughts are to just get them all loose uh, that doesn't seem to want to take a 10 millimeter the 10 millimeter doesn't want to go on some of these so I'm gonna to have to have a look and see what size here or whether they're just rusty Now I have spilt some oil on the floor here so that's going to have to be cleaned up um, depending on the regulations of where you live there are different rules as to what you can do with oil and what you can't do with oil and uh, how you can do things some places you wouldn't even be able to do what I'm doing now work on the car at all in the street um, I have no option and our laws say I'm okay to do that as long as I don't contaminate any waterways and so forth so I'm going to just be very careful about making sure that doesn't go in any drains and make sure that I clean it up when I'm finished now make sure when you're under a car guys that you've got everything stacked up and supported properly I've got two axle stands holding the car on the jacking points at the rear I've also got my two wheels under the car so if for some reason we come off the jacking stands at least it's going to hold the car up enough for me to be able to not be crushed because the last thing we need or the last thing I want anyway is to have this car come down on top of me that would not be a fun experience I think we're going to need a spanner for these two. Oh no, it's, they're difficult to get to, so I'll come back to them with a spanner. <laughs> I've still got my drain pan under the car because the oil is dripping. That's um, first of all stopping it dripping all over the floor, but however, it's in my way. 
and if I drop one of these bolts or nuts, it's gonna go right into the drain pan. But that's just how it is. I'd rather, I'd rather have to fish one out in a drain, drain pan than uh, have to clean up all the oil off the floor. What I'm learning more and more as I work on this car is um, a lot of doing mechanics work is about patience. Taking your time, have a think about what's going on. Don't just pile in feet first. Make sure you're not doing something silly. And keep yourself as safe as you can while you do it. Couple of ratchet spanners might be good for these two far ones in the corner. They're under a little plastic cover, and that cover makes things a bit awkward. It's just this cover's in the way to get to these two. But a spanner goes in, it's just, just fiddly. If you had a ratchet spanner, it'd come out quicker, that's all. those out just get the other ones into the same pile and now we need to pry the sump off the engine block so I'm just gonna go, go around and double check I've definitely got all of them out two of them leave a stud behind however my studs come out on the back one well that's all of them out so now they're all out I'm just gonna try and get screwdriver to lever this seal this seal is a gasket sealant it's a liquid that you we're going to put on to the new setup when that goes in and we've got to just get between it to separate this sump from the engine block. Give it a good smack and eventually it'll come off. I'm going to take the dipstick out in a minute because that seems to be poking down. I forgot to take it out. 
concerned how this oil out, which looks very gloopy, very thick. I've done a, a couple of clean outs with um, a flush, engine flush, and also a couple of little things that I'm not going to tell you what I used because I don't want you to do it because it's not, not really the best idea. Um, but some, some chemicals I've put into the car to try and clear out some problems that I think I may have with the oil rings on this car. Um, we need to clear off all this old gasket sealant. So I'm going to go around in a minute and just make sure that's all off and clean the surface before we get the new one ready to go on. Right, so the, uh, the old sump is off. I've cleaned up all underneath with my, uh, my trusty blade and some um, some panel wipe just to get the oil off and stuff. Um, here's the new sump ready for the, the sealant but before we do that I want to show you this. This oil is not what your oil should look like. If your oil looks like that, change it. ASAP. This is sludgy and slimy and muddy and thick and black. That is full of carbon and goodness knows what else. Um, it is not in good condition now. As I say, I've done an engine flush to try and fix a problem because I had blue smoke coming out the back of this car. So I had blue smoke coming out the back, at the exhaust, and uh, a couple of people said, sorry, I'll just clean my lens. A couple of people have said it's just the, uh, the oil control rings, which is a common problem on the uh, 1ZZ engines and the uh, earlier 1ZZ engines, should I say. So up until about 2005 in the UK, but 2003 in the States, um, we had a problem with the oil control rings on the pistons getting gummed up and, and messed up. And part of that, they believe, is to do with the pre-cats, which we've already changed. We've already taken the uh, manifold off and put a new one on. Um, there's also problems with the way that they were manufactured so there weren't enough holes for the oil to drain through in the pistons so a lot of the oil just sat in the rings with all the gunk and the crap and the, the mess and caused problems so what we're trying to do here is see if that's a problem so the first thing I did was put some chemicals into the cylinders now I would never recommend anybody does this I've heard of many different people doing different things there's all sorts of recipes on the internet if you want to go and search it but I'm not going to advise that you do it and I'm not going to tell you what I used um, the reason being if anything happened to your engine and you came back and said well you told me to um, that's not going to be happening so I have put something in the cylinders that I hoped would seep down into the oil control rings and break up any rubbish that's in there. Uh, I then put an engine flush into the oil, um, ran that as expected, as you normally would. And hopefully, hopefully, that's meant that all the rubbish that's in the engine, all the uh, problems that uh, could be causing issues with the, um, the oil drainage, with the um, oil control rings getting bunged up on the pistons and so on. I'm hoping that most of that or all of that is now in this drain pan that I've just emptied the oil out into. I'm hoping that I've got rid of any problems and that when I put the new sump and the new oil in, the engine will run wonderfully fine and be perfectly good and have no oil coming out at all. Um, I'm not sure that's going to be the case to be honest. There are various various people that say once the oil rings are gunk gunked up you need to strip the engine and clean them out or just get another engine um, if I have to I'm going to rebuild this engine uh, it's not not sort of financially worth doing that because it costs the same to take the engine out rebuild it and put it back in as it does to just get a second hand engine that's in non working condition however if it's rebuilt it'll be in better condition than a refurbished one and it will last longer so I'll have a, a little bit of security in the, the fact that I've built it and I know it's clean and I can put the new style pistons in so the oil will drain better and the oil control ring should never bung up as long as the oil is changed regularly um, however that means rebuilding an engine and I've never done that before but I would like to do that for the channel I'd like to learn about it and I'd like to show you guys how I learn 
um, and what I what I do and how I get through it. So it might be a good learning experience if I need to. I'm hoping, however, that I can just put this oil in and that it runs absolutely fine. And if it does, great. If it doesn't, then we'll have to look at a rebuild. So we're going to get back under the car in a minute. We're going to get the sump um, siliconed up, get the silicon on there and get the bolts back in. And then we're going to talk the sump in place and we're going to put the oil filter in place. Now, a little trick I've taught myself really. I've previously put oil in the car and I'd forgotten to put the oil filter back on. Loads of people have done it. Um, you end up with a big puddle of oil on the floor and you have to go and buy another can of oil <laughs> to put in the car. So what I've started doing now is before I start work, I put my new oil filter on top of the filler cap. When I go to fill the oil, I'll see the oil filter there and go, hang on a minute, that's not supposed to be there. It's supposed to be in the, under the car and then I'll put it on before I fill up. Just a handy little tip for you guys that might work for you. Um, if you've ever done it before, if you've ever done an oil change or if I'm inspiring you to do things you've never done before and you're gonna do an oil change, then this is a good way to stop getting oil all over the floor and uh, keep it in your engine. Okay guys, so uh, we're gonna get a setup now for uh, putting the silicon on, putting the RTV silicon on the sump. We're gonna get ready to put that back under the car, put the bolts and nuts in place and try and talk this down before the silicon goes off. You have about three or four, maybe five minutes before it starts to go off and you have problems. Uh, talk settings for this are on my phone. So if you bear with me one second, I'll get them for you. Um, this is the talk settings for the sump nuts and bolts that hold it in place. Um, I'm always wary of giving um, Uh, what are they called? Uh, yeah, talk settings. I'm always uh, wary of giving talk settings out on so, some things because you can cause a lot of damage if, if I've given you them wrong. But on something like this, it's nine newton meters. Now, if you do it to nine newton meters, that is probably the lowest that most um, torque wrenches will go to. So if you do it to that and it doesn't work, the worst that's gonna happen is the oil will leak. So when you put your oil in and you go underneath to check, you'll have oil coming out. Uh, or when you run the engine and get it warm and just check everything's you know, running smoothly, you'll see an oil leak. So what I would suggest to you is take my 9 newton meters that I've given you and uh, use it. If there are any problems though, you need to keep an eye underneath and make sure that if there are any leaks of any kind, that you go back and you tighten them back down. Um, 9 newton meters isn't very tight. Um, it's, it's not tight at all. So. I, what the idea of this I think is that the silicon ends up doing the sealing rather than it being a pressure fit So we need to make sure that the silicon that goes on the sump is in a good even and uh, Unbroken line all the way around. We'll sort that out now, and we'll get ready to put this back on onto the car All right peeps, so this is the stuff I'm using. It's a RTV silicon. It's a black gasket maker this one um, I think you can get it in different colors. I don't know what the different colors are what the benefits are and what we're going to do is we're going to follow the edge of the pan and where there's a bolt hole we're going to make sure we come on the inside of the bolt hole the idea of that is if any oil comes up it doesn't just go down a bolt hole and out into the floor and um, it's a full inner seal but where there's a flat area we're going to go into the middle of that flat area now you should have a nozzle on this cut to about four or five millimeters however I've lost mine so I'm just going to be very careful make sure we get all the way around the outside and I don't want any gaps if I make a gap I'll go back and just fill it in a little bit and you don't want to put too much in this either if you put too much in you can cause more problems with it leaking over into things and blocking holes that you don't want it to block. Right peeps, so the idea of this now is to get it in and on without doing two things. Firstly, you don't want to get any oil where the silicon is. You want to make sure it's going to stick. And second of all, you don't want to disturb the silicon and create a, a gap. So we're just going to 
slide it in place. Put a, a bolt in to hold it in place. And then we're gonna get around quickly and get everything that holds it in place in and tight and topped up to the nine newton meters as soon as we can. Right ladies and gents, I've put a little bit of a little bit of oil on this ceiling ring for the oil pump. Uh, some people put oil in the sorry for the oil filter. Some people put oil in the filter. Um, I never have, I've never found a problem. The idea is I think that you end up um, sort of priming the system a little bit. I just make sure that I turn the engine over. For the first time um, without the spark plug connected so I disconnect at least two of the coil packs and then we have no problems it uh, primes the engine before you actually start it and get heat into it uh, remember you only do these up hand tight don't go crazy with them we're ready to fill oil and see where we go the oil I'm going to be using today is it's quite a cheap oil and um, the reason being I know I'm going to re um, filter this again I'm sorry I'm gonna uh, drop the oil and uh, flush it again because I think like I said earlier um, I think I've got some gummed up um, oil control rings so I'm gonna put some cheap stuff in run it around for a bit try and use it as a flushing oil this is 20 quid for uh, five liters at Asda of all places um, it's 530 5w30 which is this recommended specification for this car I've got myself a, a funnel, so let's put you down. And we'll put three litres in the car. Oil filter's definitely on. What I might actually do is just put an arbitrary amount in, maybe a litre. And see where we go. Just to make sure we've no leaks. That's a litre. I'm gonna give that a second to get down to the bottom of the engine. Don't look like we've got any leaks, so let's put another litre in. That's yeah, so another litre. I'm going to go under the car this time rather than just have a quick look. I'm going to make sure nothing's coming out of any of the seams between the, the sump and the uh, bottom of the engine.
and again nothing seems to be coming out there so we'll put our third litre in each time we put a litre in we're putting a little bit more weight and hydraulic pressure behind the oil so it's got more and more chance of leaking through I'm going to give that a good couple of minutes double check levels while we're up even though I'm not going to use these as my final levels I'm not going to rely on them just make sure that I'm not overfilling any crazy amount which I'm definitely not I'm just going to put the car down off the jack stands and uh, we'll get ready to do the final levels top ups and get everything ready to start the engine. Okay, I've had the car quickly ticked over. We're off the uh, engines, uh, sorry, the um, off the jack stands. So I'm now gonna have a quick look. I've actually put an extra half a litre in as well, because I know this definitely will take three and a half litres. I believe it's actually four litres when totally empty um, but I'm not 100% sure so this is why I'm working on it a little bit at a time just working my way up start at the three go to three and a half we're near the top but we're not high enough so just a little bit more Another half a litre, so this is going to be four litres nearly. This is 3.75 ish. Let's have a quick look. And that's good, right at the very, very top of full. And that's us done.